Matthew Hedges, the British student sentenced to life in prison in the UAE for spying. He's been released and pardoned this morning. We want to get you the very latest on this. We can cross to Faraz Kalani, who's the BBC Arabic special correspondent. He joins us now from Abu Dhabi. And uh, tell us what more we know, Faraz, about Mr Hedges' whereabouts now. Yeah, as you said, we can confirm that he was freed like uh, one hour uh, ago. Now, what we hear that he will be on the flight to London at 10 uh, local time, London time. Uh, so he might be uh, arrived in London at 5 BHT, let's say. There are two flights, we, 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 we never know which one of them he will take, the Etihad or the BA. But we can confirm now that he will be heading to the UK at 10 London time tonight. And, of course, he has been released, but uh, it has been made very clear by the government there that he is still uh, guilty in their eyes of spying and that this has been a, a pardon, uh, an act of clemency. Yes, exactly. This is what, what, let me tell, tell you what happened today morning. First, when they have this press conference, they start, started in a private session uh, of the record. They show us seven minutes videos. It's, it's a kind of clips, separate clips, no context showing him in different uh, sessions, admitting that he worked with, uh, worked as a captain with the MI6, do this and that with, with the collecting infos not related to his job. This is off the record, as we said. And then when they start the, uh, the official on-camera on uh, statement, they said that more, they, they said a lot of details about what happened, what he admitted, and uh, uh, the timing of, the, of things, all of that stuff. And then they said that he was included in this uh, pardon, uh, which was declared yesterday, and it's not a private one, to make it clear, it's not about him, because uh, 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 the pardon, um, I think it, it, it's, uh, it will include uh, like 700-something uh, prisoners here in the, in the uh, UAE. Given the intervention of the British Foreign Secretary and the discussions that have had to happen, what do you think, if anything, will be the ongoing impact between, on the relationship between Britain and the UAE? Now something happened over the last last uh, ten days since that since he was uh, uh, sentenced uh, for life. Uh, we heard a lot from the UK from uh, Foreign Office and and statements from here. There was a big problem. To be honest, I interviewed the guy, the the, 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 the official person who today uh, read the statements, and I'll send you the clips later. He said that nothing wrong, but. Uh, and on another note, we know that there is a kind of sensitive issues regarding the UK policy towards the conflict, the, the, the Gulf conflict, if you like. And the UAE don't, uh, let me be careful on this, but don't like how the UK deal with the situation, especially regarding the Muslim Brotherhood issue, because the UAE think that, that they still, uh, uh, like they have their, their safe havens in, in the UK, they, they still don't cut their relation with them, they support them in, in, in different levels. So this is the main issue, the Muslim Brotherhood issue is the main issue, and I think behind what happened with Matthew, there is a lot of political uh, motiv motivations. I, I cannot say it, but because I've met a lot of people here, officials, I keep hearing this thing, that, that the Muslim Brotherhood and the policy of the UK towards them is the key thing, the problem behind all of the, this problem, all of this uh, uh, let me say, uh, uh, not uh, the problem between them, the, the, the bilateral, uh, bilateral relationship between the UK and the UAE. I see, yeah, absolutely. Faris, good to speak to you. Thanks very much indeed. Faris Kalani there, who is in Abu Dhabi.